Hi everyone, Ken Brer from Ken Brer Team Building Leadership and Coaching. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join me as I introduce my inaugural vlog, my video blog. And today, we're going to go back in time to 1985. The location is Kitchener-Waterloo uh, Philosophy 101 course at uh, Wilfrid Laurier University. Being taught by Professor Rocky Jacobson, a first-year prof uh, teaching philosophy. And if you imagine what a first-year prof teaching philosophy would look like, with some hippie qualities, then you'd certainly be right in the ballpark because you'd have a pretty good sense of what Rocky Jacobson looked like. A real cool cat and a guy who had this real significant talent. Uh, he, he was just precise in his ability to hit pressure points to get this room of 80, 90 students, of first year students at Wilfrid Law University uh, to work on their debating skills and to argue, but also on the other side of the coin to respect someone else's position and their argument. And, uh, to this day, since 1985, that classroom, that experience with Professor Jacobson uh, resonates with me. Now, there was one day that stands out out of all of them, and that was the day he introduced something called the Theseus Paradox. Now, you don't have to be a mythology major to understand what that is. Essentially, here's the Coles notes. Imagine there's a ship, and it's sailing from point A to point B. And in that time, while it crosses that broad body of water, every piece of that ship is replaced by another piece that is identical. The question that Rocky posed to the classroom was, is it the same ship when it reaches its destination? And then he just stood back and moderated as the discussion continued and the argument picked up speed and, and uh, it was a pretty entertaining class. Now, people were arguing that yes, it's the same ship for their reasons. Some say, no, it can't be the same ship for their reasons. Some people went spiritual. Some people went on about the engineering of the ship. Some people went about the name and that if you're on one ship and you get to point B and you're still on that one ship and there's not two ships, then it's still the same ship. It went back and forth and highly, again, highly entertaining. But for me, I looked at it from a different perspective and it's probably connected to my football experience where I needed to trust my coaches and what they're selling me in terms of the bill of goods for me to compete and buy in. So my thought was, if you're the captain of that ship and you have a crew, first off, when do you tell them? And secondly, uh, what do you tell them to convince them to take on this mission? Now, if it's a case of you're about a, a mile out into your trip, a right, kilometer out into your trip if you're Canadian. And, and then you say, oh, by the way, guys, a little bit of an addendum to our journey. We're going to start replacing all the pieces of this ship and uh, with the hope that we don't sink. Uh, so let's get her done. Well, what's going to happen is the crew that are good swimmers are going to hop overboard and swim back to shore. Or those who don't swim very well will be the leaders of the mutiny and uh, because they've been betrayed because their captain hasn't been authentic, hasn't been genuine with them. So... Uh, if you're going to share the message, I would think if you're the captain of the ship, you would do it when you're on terra firma. When you're in the pub, hey guys, I got this great idea. We're going to sail the ship from point A to point B and we're going to replace every piece. Who's with me? Well, no, you're, you're cut off first off, captain, because it's, it's a horrible idea and we're staying here where it's safe. Again, high risk, high reward situation. High risk, we could drown uh, after sinking or we could get there and be legends and have a great story to tell our grandchildren. Right, so there you are on terra firma, and you're going to relay the message. This is our mission, and you know you may lose most of the most of the crew, and that makes sense. But then some of the crew, uh, if you as a captain have shown leadership skills that are based on authenticity and being genuine, they may say, "Okay, coach, uh, captain, or coach, this is just a crazy idea, but I want to hear more because we trust you." Okay. That's the moment where now you've got them because now you've contacted, right? From a coaching standpoint, you want to you want to contact and connect, then you want to collaborate and communicate, and then you want to go conquer, right? So here you are. Now you've connected, you've contacted. Now it's time to communicate, communicate and collaborate. So now you introduce the five W's of the mission: the when, when are we going to do it, why we're going to do it, who's going to do it, where we're going to do it, and what we're doing, right? So that gives you the foundation of knowledge that you can build upon. And if the captain can introduce that, and still have them sitting there saying, okay, I get that point of it, but we still need more information. Now, some may buy in, some may walk away, but you'll still have an invested audience. And that's when the collaboration begins, where the crew might say, okay, captain, uh, I get where you're coming from, but uh, what if this happens? What if that happens? And then you start thinking about all the contingencies and all the things that can go wrong and all the things that can go right so that you can get yourself from point A to point B. It's not like the captain's going to be sailing the ship. He's the only one looking at the map. Someone else gets a look at the map just in case because the fact of the matter is, is we all know when it comes to any kind of mission, any kind of challenge, 
the likelihood of going from point A to point B in a direct straight line hardly ever happens. Hardly ever happens. So you're gonna to have to be able to adapt and be agile and introduce course change and so that you can avoid some contingencies uh, that could lead to failure. So if you do all that, you communicate and you share and you've collaborated and then you got a game plan, now the, the risk factor has been mitigated and the reward becomes far more realistic and, and, and tangible, right? Because now there's that foundation knowledge, you've created a belief. Now it's time to get on the ship and take on this, this, this new challenge. And uh, that stuck with me in everything I do, whether it's playing football, whether it's my career as a broadcaster, whether it was you know, my work I do now as a, a team builder and a leadership and coaching consultant, uh, father of three kids, uh, the idea of being authentic and genuine and transparent is key to any success that a leader hopes for. And uh, I wanted to share that with you because uh, I, I've seen there's been a, a, a palpable change in terms of leadership over the last 20, 30 years. In the 70s, what would happen is the CEO would be in his office and the edict would come down and say, everybody jump. So then everybody put their blinders on and put their earplugs in and just start jumping. Why? Because the CEO said so. It didn't make any sense. There was no real value to it. And, and that'd be more of a step backwards and a step forward for the team. And then things began to change and more voices and the idea of embracing everyone's potential, the potential the contribution that they can make. Um, now, you don't always adopt everybody's thought or insight or idea, but to have an environment, create an environment where, you know, sharing and, and really put in a value on someone's time. Is, is so important from a leadership standpoint. The fact of the matter is, is that if you work a 40 hour work week and you work out the numbers, you're working over 2000 hours in a year. That's something like 20, 22% of your time in a year, right? That's, that's, that's a significant chunk of time and very personal. So if, if someone doesn't feel like they're being embraced for who they are and their, their potential contribution to the team, um, they're not gonna stick around. Uh, so there are plenty of studies that show that when someone leaves a team, leaves a job, hardly ever. They do, some do it for money, but for the most part, money is not the mitigating factor. It's the environment and whether or not leadership is open, authentic, genuine, and embraces the potential uh, that the team has, the individuals within the team bring to the table. And that's so important. And I was struck by that in 1985. And it always resonated with me. And it, I think I like to think that it made me a good teammate, a better teammate, and it make me uh, it made me a better leader as well. So um, uh, this is one of those interesting, th interesting things in philosophy 101 back in 1985 that sort of is tied to a lot of things that I've experienced in my life. And uh, it was so important that I wanted to share it with you. And maybe you had one of those moments as well. If you do, please share them with me. I'd love to hear about them. And uh, it's, it's really about being in the right place in the right time. And to get to the right place in the right time from a leadership standpoint, to get your team there, being authentic and genuine uh, is, is key above all keys. And um, I wanted to share that story with you because, again, it was important to me. And I hope you enjoyed it. Again, my name is Ken Averre from Ken Averre Team Building Coaching Leadership. My website is www.kenavore.com. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram. Um, Thank you for taking time out uh, for me and with me as I shared the story of my philosophy 101 experience with Professor Rocky Jacobson and the Theseus Paradox. I wish you nothing but a great day, and I'll talk to you real soon.